Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, I hope you're doing well. And it's time for some thoughts on the legendary, classic, influential, groundbreaking mixtape from one Mr. ASAP Rocky, Live Love ASAP, dropped in 2011. It's been floating around for a while, obviously, 10 years on in fact, uh, but now this thing has officially hit streaming platforms with a few alterations. We have a bonus track, a couple of cuts unfortunately did not uh, make the cut. The purple swag version on this streaming, you know, edition of the tape is uh, shorter as it does not have the Space Ghost Perp feature that was on Purple Swag 2. Keep It G still does have Space Ghost Perp on it. It does seem like there are some tracks such as Bass and Peso that have been on streaming for a long time and have gotten grandfathered into, uh, again, this new edition of the project. So listening to this thing 10 years later, and I mean, I've listened to this project plenty of uh, times since it was originally released, there hasn't really been a year for me where I don't think this tape or some tracks from it uh, weren't in rotation at some point because it's so goddamn good. I think over the years, this thing has become more and more relevant, and that's both a good and a bad thing. Great in that, obviously, ASAP Rocky is absolutely legend status right now. But on top of it, the surreal and psychedelic sounds that Rocky helped usher into the mainstream with this mixtape are so omnipresent and so normal and so popular now, it may be difficult for some people to go back and listen to this tape or listen to a figure like ASAP Rocky and see exactly what makes him stand out artistically in comparison with everything else out there. But look, let me tell you, when this tape dropped, it was certainly a unique sound and a unique moment and was a defining moment for what many would be calling cloud rap in the early 2010s. Now, ASAP Rocky was certainly not the first to, you know, hop on the sound and push the sound. I mean, certainly he owes a great debt to uh, one Clams Casino for producing some of the most significant tracks on this thing. And even before ASAP Rocky was dropping tracks with Clams Casino on this project, uh, Clams was doing plenty of songs with Little B. Still, in my opinion, with this tape turning 10 years old, the most significant in terms of bringing this sound to a mass audience. And I think there's also something to be said for the unique approach Approach that Rocky took to this style because he was incorporating elements of Houston rap and chopped and screwed and Memphis stuff and Atlanta stuff as well, basically pulling from the darkest murkiest and sometimes trippiest sounds in hip hop's past and bringing them together onto this tape where we're even more drenched in drippy synthesizers and uh, super cavernous reverbs, twinkling tones as well as flows and deliveries where Rocky occasionally would sound a little spaced out. I think as uh, the years drew on, his rapping smoothed out quite a bit. There's still something to be said about the unique sound and style and combination of aesthetics that Live Love ASAP brought to the table, as well as just like the super great songs, choruses, writing. Rocky's never been the flashiest lyricist or the fastest rapper, far from it. In fact, for whatever reason, when he broke the similarity of his name to Aesop Rock, uh, constantly like drew comparisons between the both of them and their respective styles. But when I compliment Rocky's writing and creativity on this project, it's not in uh, the way I might a rapper in the traditional sense. He's more of a curator of sounds on this thing, and also someone who has an ear for what's catchy, the choruses of Peso, bass, what's up, extremely catchy, brand new guy, extremely catchy. Sure, there are some songs here that are maybe uh, navel-gazing a bit too much and they drag on or they're a tad tedious. I'm thinking Acid Drip, I'm thinking maybe a Get Lit to a degree with all of its uh, pitched vocals kind of layering on top of each other and repeating the same phrasing over and over and over. Over. And funny enough, my least favorite track on this tape uh, did not make the uh, final cut 
on this thing, Kiss and Pink, uh, R.I.P. Kiss and Pink. But again, on this tape, and especially the studio album that uh, followed it, Rocky had just an incredible ear for what was uh, catchy, what would play, uh, what would go viral. And uh, not to say his music is completely substanceless. I, I don't believe that to be the case. I mean, just listen to the final tracks of this thing, Demons and, and Sandman. Uh, Demons, I think, is pretty eerie to listen to in retrospect, considering um, you know, just kind of the dark path that all the drugs that fueled this record sort of led um, Rocky, ASAP Mob, and, and Yams especially down. And, uh, you know, Sandman is a track that is uh, in tribute to uh, Yams, at least in part. Obviously, on those tracks, Rocky explores the darker side of drug abuse. Finally, I want to talk about just how relevant and current and present day this project sounds today, I would say that like aesthetically, the only thing it uh, is not really showcasing that is so ever present in everything we hear now is, uh, uh, you know, just that like aggressive modern trap percussion, the hi-hats and the 808s. I mean, obviously this thing is intensely influenced by old school trap music from the South and Southern hip hop in general, but uh, you know, it's, it's not embodied in the same way that you might hear it embodied in any number of tracks and projects that are coming out now. Live Love ASAP doesn't exactly sound like it's uh, come out in 2021, but still like consider the fact that so much of the hip hop that comes out today and trap music that comes out today has an element of being a little trippy, being a little psychedelic, being a little surreal. Plus, a lot of the artists and influences that had a huge impact on this tape are still having huge impacts today. It's just that their influence, I think, has evolved in different ways in terms of how they uh, uh, manifest on other projects dropping now. Like, you still hear a lot of chopped and screwed influences on records that drop today, uh, Three Six Mafia influences on records that drop today. And also keep in mind, like, ASAP Rocky was a part of a new generation of artists that were kind of born on the internet and were making music that wasn't really affiliated with the area that they came from. It was such a novel thing at the time in the early 2010s to have an artist from New York repping New York, repping Harlem, and he is coming through with this like Houston sound with, again, some Atlanta in there, some Bone Thugs in there, and just a healthy dose of internet-based cloud rap. So yes, Live Love ASAP, 10 years later, still kicks ass, still sounds great, still a unique project, uh, still a lot of songs that sound as heavy and vibrant as they did 10 years ago. Like, I still love to put on What's Up, Bass, Peso. I think Sandman is a great addition on the end of the project. And if anyone has not heard this thing before, or maybe only a few tracks from it, I highly encourage that you uh, uh, give this thing a shot now that it's up on streaming. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your thoughts and comments uh, down below. If you have any uh, uh, feelings on this tape, did you listen to it when it originally came out? Did you love it then? Do you still love it now? Have your thoughts changed at all over the years? And yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Anthony Fantano, ASAP Rocky, Live Love ASAP, uh, forever.